everyone, I'm Shaylin with Readsley, and I'm here today with another video. And today we're going to be talking about Chekhov's gun, what it is and how to use it. Also, forgive my voice, cold season has begun and it immediately found me. So the term Chekhov's gun comes from Anton Chekhov, a playwright who quoted, if there's a gun hanging on the wall in Act 1, that gun should be fired in Act 3. It's essentially a form of setup and payoff, or a way of looking at setup and payoff. It's also not the same as foreshadowing, although those two are often confused. With Chekhov's gun, you introduce an element that seems quite relevant. You see the gun hanging on the wall, and it's pretty clear that something's going to happen with that gun. With Chekhov's gun, you want the audience to see that gun. Whereas with foreshadowing, you're kind of slipping in hints that you don't want the reader to consciously notice so that it'll make sense later on when something is revealed. So for example, if in the first chapter of your book you introduce that your protagonist can read minds, and then the entire book happens and a mind is never read, that would be a failed opportunity for a Chekhov's gun because you've introduced this really pretty glaring fact. It's hard to ignore the fact that the character can read minds and then nothing ever really comes from it or nothing important comes from it. Whereas with foreshadowing, you might have a completely different type of story. For example, if you want the fact that the protagonist can read minds to be a plot twist, then you would have to hint at that through foreshadowing. So how do you actually apply Chekhov's gun to a story? First of all, spotlight an item. This is the classic example of Chekhov's gun, kind of what we think of. We introduce a key item and we really highlight it. Now, of course, you're going to be describing a lot of things in the world in order to set the scene. Not every irrelevant object is going to be important. If I look at what's behind me right now, I could describe when I'm setting the scene that there's a candle and some book. I kind of expect those things to be on a shelf, but if there was something really, really weird on that shelf, then that would be something that would be setting up more of a Chekhov's gun. Chekhov's gun is a promise. You're setting up a promise that something is going to be important later on. None of these things are really promising, I'm just saying what's on the shelf, but if there was a gun there, for example, that would be setting up a promise. You could also highlight a character trait, which could also be a Chekhov's gun, like the mind reading that I just mentioned. If a character has a really eye-catching or unique or strange trait or skill, that can seem like a sort of Chekhov's gun at the beginning because you're setting up that this is going to be important. It's the same thing as with the items. Your character is going to have a lot of different traits, not all of them will be a Chekhov's gun, but if you have one that really stands out, you're kind of saying this is going to be relevant later. Step three is to follow the unexpected events in your story. This is pretty much the same idea, but with an event or an occurrence. If there's something quite strange or unusual that happens, especially if it's kind of out of the blue, that should really be followed up upon. If you don't follow up on really strange out of the blue events, then it can kind of just seem like a blip of weirdness that doesn't fit the plot. And it can also seem like a deus ex machina that was used just to divert the story without really doing anything. Now, for any of these things, the function could be as a red herring rather than a Chekhov's gun. Like a Chekhov's gun, a red herring is a device, but instead of being used to set up and pay off, it's actually used as a distraction. You often see red herrings used in mysteries where it's used to distract the reader from what's really going on from the truth. It seems important, actually it seems more important than it really is. However, if you are using a red herring, it should still have cohesion and relevance to the story. If you use a red herring that really seems to come out of nowhere, it could seem more like a Chekhov's gun that was never acted upon, so like a failed Chekhov's gun. When you're choosing something to be a Chekhov's gun, choose something with importance, something that the audience will have feelings toward when they see it. There's a reason that it's a gun. We have feelings towards that. When we see a gun, it carries implications. It's dangerous, it's a weapon. It could cause major damage. If there's a hat on the wall, no one really cares if no one puts on the hat by the end of the story. It's just a hat. We don't really have strong feelings about the hat, but we do have strong feelings about the gun. So that's why Chekhov's guns are usually things that even without knowing how they're going to have an effect on the plot, the audience will immediately feel something towards as soon as they see it. That's kind of how you identify a Chekhov's gun versus just a detail within the scene. Something innocuous doesn't make promises to the reader, something with a lot of weight like a gun does. If you want to revisit any of the information in this video, you can check out the blog post in the description. And remember to subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Thanks so much for watching, until next time!